Welcome along to this week's edition of Get Stuck in Plenty. Look forward to it. Betfair Tingle Creek takes centre stage at Sandling. Also a good card at Aintree. The Beecher Chase and the Mini Clouds feature among their seven races. But before we do it, in the company of Martin Dixon and Dan Barber, let's talk Constitution Hill. How good? Yeah, unbelievable. Honestly, just a breathtaking performance. We knew he had it in him, I suppose, from what he'd done at Cheltenham, but to see him confirm it. And whatever you make of Epiton, however, however ready she was, she'd won that race the previous two years. And he made a look like a selling plate. That burst of pace was just incredible. I think she's. I think he's a one in a million type. I really do. I don't see any reason why you would think that Epitome wasn't really on her game, Dan. No, it's just one of those, isn't it? Clear, stable second string. Andy, what Aiden did look after her, after her once she was put in a place, but that's once she's been put in a place. And I love that moment. If you'd if you'd have um, if you'd have turned the TV on, turning into the home straight you'd have thought, well, they've all got a bit of a chance mm. here because none of them were in trouble, you know, just as they were approaching the third last flight of hurdles. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, within literally two seconds, yeah, well, he was away, he'd gone. He'd yeah. gone. And, and that's they, 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 they would like drop, start over yeah, and they were dropping just one by one by one, but very quickly, and then he just had Epiton cooked. And Epiton, like, like she's been a strong travelling speed horse all her life. I know she went over further at Aintree at the back yeah. end, but just to get her out of a comfort zone so quickly. As you say, four starts, one seven seven p with time form, five pound off Night Nurse, the highest ever, who was famed for longevity and how often he ran. This horse is doing it after four starts. And, it's and, freakish stuff. And he, he's only a five-year-old as well, which gives us a lot to look forward to. He's five going on six. I was at Newbury last weekend, jet-powered, one for Nicky Henderson. He was catapulted towards the sort of four of the Supreme Novices betting. He's exactly the same age as Constitution Hill, five-year-old yeah. going on six, and you get horses every day of the week reappearing in bumpers that yeah. are the same yeah, age six, as Constitution yeah. Hill, and he's already at that sort of level. So you know, it uh, gives us a, an awful lot as racing fans to look forward to. And we were in here in here last week, sort of hoping that Constitution Hill would go to the fighting fifth. He would take on mm. Epiton, and look what that opportunity you know got us to see as, as racing fans, and it's created a bit of headlines, a good buzz. And, and that's what we all want going into the you know this early part of the, the national hunt season and into the winter months. We're looking forward to this weekend, Hatton's Grace, Honeysuckle, she's back. Yeah, she is. And look, people are sort of dismissive, of very dismissive of her and after what Constitution Hill has done. But 16 from 16, she's been tremendous. Whatever happens from this point yeah. onwards doesn't yeah, take away what she's already achieved I'm anyway. Yeah. And look, she'll have a fine chance of making it 17 out of 17. She's won the Hatton's Grace three times before. Um, two years ago, when she beat Ronald Pump half a length, that was about as close as she's been to getting beaten on her seasonal comeback. But the other two times she's won it, she's been very impressive. And it looks like it, it should be a bit of a penalty kick for the, her, really. The closest Constitution Hill's been to getting beaten, I think, is 12 lengths, isn't it? <laughs> Six, so aggregate of 60 lengths over four starts. It's like I likened it on the Nick Lux pod to flight line on the flat, you know, just raw distances, you know, just extending that much that you just. A complete class apart. I, I've not seen a herder like him, I, even Isterbrack, I really haven't. OK, and this weekend we're obviously looking forward to the Betfair Tingle Creek at Sandown Park. And once again, a talking point is the ground. What's it going to be? Earlier I caught up with Clark and the course, Andrew Cooper, and asked him about the underfoot conditions. Uh, morning, Niall. I'd say we are currently here, chase course. Well, it remains a mix of good to soft and good ground. I mean, officially to date, I've left it as good, good to soft in places as a result of that. Uh, hurdle course, which obviously is the irrigated summer flat course here, always softer. I, I, I basically call that soft at the moment. You know, we've got little bits of ground either side of that. I think in, as you can do the whole circuit, but I think soft here and now is a fair shout. And, you know, I can tell appreciably sounder on the chase course. Mm. Um, it's amazing, isn't it, what we're going through at the minute. Your last meet was called off a waterlogging, and here we're talking about, you know, can you get an easy side of good for this Saturday? Yeah, I, I, I think people, I mean, there were very particular circumstances about that abandonment uh, three or four weeks ago, you know, which I know people, yes, we did. We did basically abandon for waterlogging. But the problem areas were, were relatively isolated. We, we couldn't really solve them on the day. Yeah. Um, and we had, did have a sort of an intense spell of rain on race day morning. Now, you probably would have come back the next day and raced perfectly happily in Sandown. So, you know, yes, we abandoned for waterlogging three or four weeks ago. But uh, people really shouldn't think that, you know, yes. we It was just it came down that quick. Yeah, absolutely. Settled down very, very quickly. And as they were, they were very short-term issues 
caused yeah. by you know very heavy rain on race day morning because we walked into a steeplechase course on that day that I was actually calling good. And mm -hmm. um, what's the forecast between now, Tuesday morning, and, and Saturday? Uh, basically dry Nile, uh, temperatures getting a bit cooler, but nothing that at the moment we're sort of concerned about towards the end of the week. Mm. I mean, the, lo the longer term actually looks looks quite dry and, and staying cold for, for quite some time. But dealing with, with our sort of time frame, a um, little bit of sort of drizzle in the air here today at the moment, a bit murky, but nothing. it's not going to amount to anything in rainfall terms. And as I say, I think we're just looking at a sort of gradual decline in temperatures over the week. Mm. Saturday being a sort of six degree day, Friday being a little little bit uh, less cold than that, and overnight temperatures in the sort of two, three territory. So, you know, we should be okay. But the key thing is, you know, there really isn't any rain in our forecast of mm. meaningful mode. So you think you'll probably get a mixture of good, good to soft? I think so. And that's been my, my, my view, you know, really since the middle part of last week. Um, we've had bits and pieces of rain since the middle part of last week. They've generally been on the lowest side of what we might have seen in forecasts, including Sunday. I mean, Sunday here could have been a sort of half an inch of rain day. Um, and somewhere like Lingfield, you know, I think saw, saw nine, 10 millimetres. Well, we, uh, we're not far to the west of them and we only saw about five, five and a half yeah. millimetres on Sunday. So uh, yeah, um, we, we, we're doing a little bit of watering on the chase course here. Anyone, anyone who walk Sandown, no Sandown will know that it, it, it does have its sort of traditionally quicker places and, and the, the, the obvious and the most sort of widely known one would be the latter part of the back straight. Yeah. I mean, in particular, you land, take, you know, the water jump to that first railway fence sits basically on a bank of sand. Um, you know, we've got much heavier soils elsewhere on the track, yeah. but that is a, a furlong of the steeplechase course that even in the depths of winter is rarely slower than sort of soft side of good and is always the first bit we ever go to with watering. So just to try and just to keep that sort of section of ground through the back straight there um, in the good territory, you know, we're doing some watering at the moment and we'll, we'll, we'll keep going with that as the week goes on. There'll be, there'll be a lot of the chase course you wouldn't need to go near with yeah. irrigation and it will stay comfortably on the softer side of good. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, we're looking forward to the Betfair at uh, Tingle Creek Saturday. Andrew, as ever, thanks very much uh, for the updates and have a good day. Thanks, Matt. And at the time of talking Tuesday late morning, Grenatine and Shishkin are five to four joint favourites. Is that maybe because Shishkin might not line up? It's categorically because of that, isn't it? Because if he does line up, he'll be a very, very short price and, and rightly so to win the Tingle Creek. Hopefully he does. I mean, Sandown's very different track to Ascot anyway. I think generally there's maybe a slightly easier surface there. Um, hopefully if they do keep it just on the easy side of good, we, we do get an opportunity to see Shishkin again. Nicky Henderson making positive noises really for the last couple of weeks in terms of his condition and how Nick, Nico de Boinville has been uh, speaking of him in terms of his work at home and things like that. They feel seemingly that they've got him back after the disappointment of the champion chase last season. So hopefully we do see him. You, you look at Shishkin's record overall, he's only actually won one grade one outside of Novice Company. He hasn't had that much racing outside of Novice Company but he's only won one grade one and Grenatine by comparison he isn't quite the same calibre of horse on his best form but he's won three grade ones already he won the Tingle Creek he won the Celebration Chase twice all of them have come at Sandown he's got a fantastic record that he's built up at Sandown over the last couple of seasons and Edward Stone spoke similar comments about him will he, will he want to? yeah shame because he's had two entries so far this season has been taken out of both it was a Schleur and then what would have been a real di interesting dynamic at the Ascot meeting which was so controversial we discussed last week was he was entered for the handicap and didn't go for it you hope he'd have a crack I mean he's nine going on ten you don't have that much longer to be messing around with a horse like him and how, how many chances do you get and particularly when you think much so I love the horse he's going to get to a champion chase and he'll probably be third or fourth favourite he's he would be the, behind the likes of an Ergamine and, and Shishkin. That's one thing you say about Shishkin. He may have the, just the one grade one win, but he's beaten last season's champion chaser in an Ergamine in that thrilling battle at Ascot last season. It, it's a tricky one, but Grenatine was significantly shorter price this time around than he was 12 months ago. He's gone to Exeter, massive effort, big weight and a handicap, but winning a handicap. We saw what Lauren Press did. These class horses can just do that. And Gentle Demi will surely be some sort of spoiler because he's got one way of going. He's a really free-going horse, as we saw last season. So I, he looks a poorish price to me at five to four. I don't. You can't be recommending back Shishkin at five to four when you, 
he might be taken out later in the week. But you, you, you can't really have a bet, can you? To be honest, uh, no, you at this stage, because it, it it so much depends on whether or not Shishkin runs. Because if you if you end up backing Grenatine at five to four and he does run, then you're on an absolutely shocking bet, aren't you? Yeah, that that's the thing. I mean, I'd be more inclined of the two at five to four. I'd be more inclined to have a bit of my stake now on Shishkin and the hope he does run because he's going to show up massively. Mm. So it feels like there's only downside to, to Grenatine's price. Mm. Um, any bigger prices? Captain well, Gibbs for the De Bromhead camp, Gentle Me for, for Woody Mullins. Funambul Civil, was runner-up in a champion chase last season. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a good horse. He's, one of the, he's about the rag of the field at the moment, but I think, I think he'll run. Um, and the ground will be fine for him if it's just decent ground. He's one on good ground. He's a fast horse, isn't he? Uh, Fun and Bull Civil and thought he was second to an erg. I mean, others didn't perform on the day, but with the way that Venetia Williams has got her horses rolling now, you'd expect him to be somewhere close to his best form. And I could certainly see him. I wouldn't say that he'd win the race, but if he could do if it cuts up. If Shishkin doesn't end up running, Edward Stone doesn't end up running, and you get that scenario that you've talked about where Grenatine and um, Gentleman, mm. Gentleman de May take each other on a little bit, it could, it could happen and fall in his favour. It could be a small field on Saturday in the, the Betfair Tingle Creek. Don Vegan is trained by Pat Fahey. He joins us now. Pat, is the plan to come over? Yeah, that's the plan at the moment. We're yeah. organising everything and... Uh, so we're, we're we're at the moment we're travelling anyway, and Brian Cooper is good to go as well. So Brian done really well him last year, didn't he? Winning the Dan Moore at Ferry House. And... Yeah, yeah. Brian gets on very well with him, and uh, the two of them uh, work together. So uh, hopefully. And he had a recent prep in the November handicap at Nice. He came out of that okay. Yeah, he came out. He came out of that uh, very good. Like we hadn't. A moment setback with him really since you know we worked him in the Curra before before the November handicap and Chris Hayes loved him that day and we thought we had him ready enough but we didn't and he didn't abuse him when, when his chance was gone so hopefully that's, that has put him right Could be a smallish field probably ground he's got bits of form in all sorts of ground including very heavy ground it's not going to be very heavy tell us about how you think he, he, he'll react to Sandow well, I went over there with Casa Grace Paddy two years ago and the ground yeah. was so heavy he couldn't even jump out of it. And uh, I, if, if it was that, I'd merely consider not travelling. Um, delighted that the ground is drying out. Yeah. Uh, he loves it. He's a big horse and he pounds, but he loves um, good ground and uh, he, he, he'd he never have a sore shin or anything. He just loves it. Right. Good stuff. And versatile, if it was a, a smallish field tactics-wise? Well, um, he he enjoys being up there, and yeah. I'd say that'll be the plan. You know where, where um, you know we we'll leave him where he's happy, and let mm. everybody else manage their own horses and do yeah. what they, whatever they want. But I would like to see him uh, where he's happy, and uh, and uh, I had him in the car recently, and Brian schooled him, so he he's always well in, and yeah. he's very happy with him. Oh, good stuff. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you Saturday. Thanks very much uh, for the update, Pat, and uh, best of luck Saturday. Well, thank you very much, and hopefully we'll be seeing you Saturday. OK, Pat Fahey's going. Good luck to him. Sum it up, at the minute it's clear as mud? Yeah, I, yeah. That, that's about it. Yeah, I think it's a fine balance between whether or not we see a, a really good renewal of the race, because you could have, if, if they all end up running, you've got the best two-mile chaser in Britain in uh, Shishkin. Last season's winner, Grenatine, who's a multiple grade one winner, goes there in form. And two of last season's best novices, Gentleman de May and Edward Stone. If they all end up going, you've got a really cracking race, a proper race. If Edward Stone and Shishkin don't go, you're left with a little bit of a damp squib in truth. So hopefully they end up running in conditions are suitable. OK, conditions will be suitable for many at the, in the northwest at the entry for the Boyle Sports Beecher Chase. Looks like there's going to be a decent field lined up there, including last year's winner, Snow Leopardess. Guest Kiel, however, is favoured at the minute from a yard who are doing really well. Yeah, they're absolutely sensational turnaround. I think it's fair to say they were, they were quiet, to say the least, last season. Whether it's the partnership, like some sort of alchemy, they've come together, Josh Guerrero and Ollie Greenall, and it seems a completely different proposition nowadays. And... They get good material, don't they? People are, are willing to spend money with them. And Geskiel has made a pretty smart, smart start considering in another stride or two he might have won a Grand Sefton. That, I suppose, makes him the obvious favourite because he's done it so recently over the national fences. But the, I don't think he's been missed necessarily. Yeah, um, he's trained by uh, the, the partnership. He's had 37 winners uh, so far this season. I caught up with Ollie and asked him how he's getting on. 
just yeah, busy morning. Jess Gill's been out. Seems all good. Nice. Uh, yeah, all good. And it's four weeks on from the, from the Grand Sefton, where he really took to them fences. Watch on. It looks like the extra yardage in the beaches should really suit. Yeah, I hope so. It's not guaranteed. The soft ground and the extra distance is um, is obviously slightly unknown, but we feel it will benefit him. Um, like you say, he took the fence as well. It was first time out last time. Our horses normally come on a little bit for the run. Um, so hopefully that'll that'll help him. And yeah, four weeks, I'd say, is absolutely perfect. Um, wouldn't want any sooner. He had a hard enough race, but uh, seems fresh and well now. Um, and Aintree's a special place to everybody, obviously, the home of the Grand National, etc., etc. But from you growing up as a kid and with your father, Lord Dorsby's sort of close connection to the race course, that bit extra special? Yeah, definitely. Uh, as children, we were always allowed to go on the Thursday of Aintree. It's probably the only day's racing we had when we were very young. And then, um, yeah, it was always probably the only place we used to go racing with mum and dad. Um, some really special memories. I used to live only 20 minutes down the road from there. So, um, with dad's connection and you know always knowing a lot of local people and stuff yeah it's a great track yeah absolutely and to have a horse i guess here if he wins a beach or chase and, and takes it well you you sort of get quotes and banged around about grand nationals itself yeah yeah exactly we haven't to be honest we haven't sort of got that far yet but it's something we we'll definitely have to think about if he runs well on saturday um he seems to just really enjoy the fences and stuff so you know no reason why not he's still only a six-year-old we think he's still improving um, he's done nothing wrong for us since coming over from France, so you, you never know. Your dad found him in France as a fall, is that right? Yeah, dad has a syndicate, there's four of them. Um, they go out and they buy sort of eight to ten foals every year, um, and then they send them into training with the idea to run them once or twice and then sell them, um, yeah. which was the idea with this lad, but he sort of took a little bit of time to come to himself, and then he sort of peaked, and then he sort of went off the boil a bit, so there wasn't really ever a right time to sell which was obviously very good for us mm. came over we went hunting chasing with him he seemed to really enjoy it a um, couple of small fields at Ludlow and Kempton I think that was the key really just he was sort of down in grey just really enjoyed it got his confidence up um, and then just went from strength to strength really and here we are we're not quite December yet 37 winners you're flying along the, the, you and Josh together it's going really well yeah no it's good it's been a great partnership um I trained point of pointing here for six years and then sort of point of points in the area were drying up and sort of gave me the push to get my license. And I just always felt that I, I needed somebody sort of to do it with. I never wanted to do it, you know, solely um, on my own as such. Um, Mick used to be always sort of told me, you know, if you want to do something well, always get the right people. And, yeah. and uh, it just happened. He was at Dan's. He was looking for something else. He'd done three years at Dan Skelton's and he's always been a great friend of mine. We rode as amateurs together. And um, just was a great fit. And then he became a partner in the business. And then um, this this start of the season, we decided to get the joint licence, which um, which has just gone from strength to strength. Yeah, and hopefully it'll continue to go to strength from strength. A nice beach or chase win at the weekend would certainly cement that. Uh, thanks for the updates, Solly, and we wish you well. We'll see you Saturday. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye now. Be a nice way to make a 38. Well, probably by the time Saturday comes, they'll, they'll have done that and a bit more. They are, are absolutely flying along. See, he's the right favourite, isn't he? I think, yeah, because he's done it recently and he's still fairly low miles. But one thing I would, a point I would make about him is he has, I know he's got form over three miles, but lately he's exclusively been kept to around two and a half. And we've seen Beecher chases in the past become, slug even fest. on drying ground, proper slugfests. I know it's the likes of Villian Rouge, who was an absolute natural around here. He could cope with that. The National was a bit too far, but it was still a mm. thorough test of stamina. To that end, I thought Percussion, who finished third in the Grand Sefton, mm was an interesting alternative at bigger prices. If you'd have told me 12 months ago that I'd be dis discussing him as regards a beach, I'd have said, you've lost the plot. But whatever it was, he really took to Aintree extremely well. He, he surpassed anything he'd done previously from out of the weights. And knowing him, he's unlike the favourite. He's got loads of form over further. He's always looked to stay here. So I actually think that gap could be narrowed significantly in a beach chase when it's going to test stamina more because he essentially has always looked a bit of a slugger. Yeah, it'll help Jess Keel that the ground conditions are going to dry up, won't it? They're set for a pretty dry week mm. at entry. Soft good to soft in places at the moment at entry, um, but it'll expect that to dry out. So it'll be more like good to soft ground, which won't be quite as testing and, and obviously that will help him, I would say, given that he's going to be stepping up in distance. Last year it was won by Snow Leopardess, fantastic scenes. Uh, trained by Charlie Longson, what a story she's been. And earlier I caught up with the trainer and asked him how she is.
Yeah, look, she's in good form. I mean, she had a little bit of blip at Warwick when she skidded into the first fence. Um, and quite rightly, Jockey pulled her up. Um, but that, in a funny way, that could have been a blessing because only two, two and a half weeks prior to the race means she didn't have a hard race. She went and schooled in Lambourne last week um, and worked in Lambourne, and we were very, very happy with her. And since these fences have been modified or whatever, you maybe don't see it, but she just stood out. She was an absolute pleasure to watch the whole way around last year. Yeah, look, I, look, she jumped them great. Look, she's probably one of not many horses who'd have loved the old style fences. Yeah. You know, the bigger, the better for her. Um, and you know, look, she took to it really well. Look, fingers crossed, she can do the same again this weekend. But the plan is very much to go. It's a great story, isn't it? You know, the the ownership. She's had a fall, the fall, um, and then to come back into training. We we rarely see that in in the thoroughbred, and to come back into training and, and achieve what she's achieved. Look, she's got the most amazing story, as you quite rightly said. Look, she's got a she's got a three year old foal, a three year old youngster. I mean, um, she's she has she's had time off with leg injuries. She's won in Ireland. She's won in France. She's she's mm. won in England. Um, you know, and just stories follow her around. And um, look, she's very very special to us. She's special to everyone. She's got a great following, but she's met in this very special to us. We saw a picture in social media recently of her walking home. I think where there was a deer beside her. Fantastic picture. Yeah, look, that was that was back at home in the summer when she was back down in Kent. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just kind of, isn't it mad how, as again, not more stories follow her around, and um, it's it's good for the sport, and it's you know it's great for it's great for all of us. Absolutely, um, I hope that three year old's going to be trained by you. Yeah, look, that she has been with us. Um, she came with us for she's gone back on hol- home for a holiday now, but she was it was with us for a few months in the in the autumn and she'll come back in the spring with a view to probably running this time next year we wish charlie longson well with snow leopardess could just be keep it simple skelton they've dominated the last couple of series they've got ashton lad what else should we mention yeah well so leopardess last season beat hill 16 in a very mm. tight finish i like his chance i think he's going to have strong claims again it looks like the race has been properly targeted also we've got a tracker horse from a couple of weeks ago five star getaway who i mentioned had caught the eye at banger he's set to take his chance in the beach just some concerns there whether or not these this is the track and the fences really for him he he was down the field in the top of last season mm. and it might be more of a conventional fences that he's of more interest we'll see i think we've all got my percussion, my first choice of double figures, mine till 16 is. Another odd point, I won't put anybody off having a stab at three at 10s plus, and I think we might even be talking bigger than that about another horse, Dr. Kanango, I thought mm. would take to the fences. Five star getaway, patiently ridden, they can get into trouble, some don't relish it, but this horse just attacks his fences over park courses anyway. If he takes to it, Ben Clark been in the news for the wrong reasons lately, it could be a, a figurehead winner after he had one snatched away from him at the end of last season. We're at entry Saturday, am I right? Yeah, yeah, we are. Um, many, many clouds, clouds well. protector out won the race last year. Ahoy, senior, nice to see him hopefully get back on a, a, a track that we know suits him. Yeah, and it's difficult to know at this stage exactly what's going to run, but it has the makings potentially of a really interesting race. A couple of second season chasers, Sound Russian and Dusart, that could mm. end up there. Yeah. Conflated's got uh, an entry as well, who won the Irish Gold Cup yeah. last season, of course, for Gordon Elliott. And Ahoy Sun, you're currently favourite for the race, but obviously does need to leave behind that, that run in the, in, mm. uh, in the Charlie Hall, which was very disappointing, really, wasn't it? Mm. I thought he was... His jumping lacked his its usual zip and zest, and he he, he was sort of laboured, and I thought it was a disappointing start to the season for him. You and I did get stuck in probably week two, and we're discussing who's going to go our favourite for the Charlie Hall. I think you and I are pretty categorical, Brave Man's Game, because everyone knows we'll be laid out for it. Mm. Ben Linfoot was saying, "No, we think it's I think it will be a high senior," and it categorically was, which I think makes his performance all the more worrying. He was backed as if he was believed to be ready and he was sluggish, and frankly, for him, a horse who finds loads, he was beaten very quickly. Price's range, I think, he's as short as five to four in a place, as big as twos in another, so clearly there's loads of uncertainty with this race. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a bet in this race, and I'm probably going to play it like this because there's uncertainty about his participation, but it's Dusart, a horse who won the air, novice, beat, novice handicap beating Sounds Russian last season. I'd almost be tempted to have a quarter of my stake on him now at sixes, and then if he's declared, you get the all clear. You have the other three quarters on it, maybe seven to two, four to one. But I think six to one about a horse of his ability, who was favourite for a lab, uh, a Coral Gold Cup, mm. should I say, uh, until being taken out. I thought it was generous. I think he's got a, a really big engine that horse, and. 
the sounds rushing for me, Rhea Pose. It has obviously been well advertised. Yeah, I mean, he wouldn't be without a chance himself, would he, sounds rushing? You no, know, he wouldn't. At least yeah. he's got a run behind him yeah. this year. He's already yeah. won up at Kelso this year where he's got a good record, but he's been seriously progressive as well. But something to bear in mind about the many clouds every year, well, not every year, but quite often you, you do get low sun, emitted fences. It can become yeah. a little bit messy. In Ironic, given the name of the race. There's yeah. not enough clouds, unfortunately. <laughs> low sun so you've just got to be aware of that. Um, with the race. Mm. Okay, good stuff. Let's look at entry uh, at the weekend. Right, it's now time to catch up with our friend Patrick Mullins after a couple of impressive winners the weekend. Joins us now. Hi, hi Patrick, you all right? Oh, good now. Thanks very much. Yeah, I, I mentioned a couple of impressive winners. A couple of horses at Classic Getaway in Greens Clare West. They, they were off the track. Are they okay after the race? Yeah, uh, both of them won well. Uh, they both, uh, both obviously um, came to us two years ago with big price tags. Um, so, and they haven't, haven't been straightforward, but it's good to see them finally maybe starting to fulfil that potential. Mm. Um, and, and obviously, you know, they've been fragile with that, that, that time off the track or whatever, but they seem OK now and, and maybe get a target around Christmas time to sort of the next step. Yeah, well, look, classic getaway, um, he was... He was always the only one that could be a better chaser. And I feel like we just couldn't get him right last year. You know, I rode him in um, Cheltenham and he ran a bit keen and stopped very quickly. Um, and then he was maybe slightly unlucky in uh, back at Punchestown. Um, but he definitely seems to jump particularly well. And that was, you know, that was realistically, that was a grade one chase. Um, mm. You know, Manila Cocooner is a grade one winner. What do you want? been placed Cheltenham in the Ballymore journey for me. Uh, was was going to be placed in the Ballymore, so it was essentially a Grade One. Um, mm. And you know, he was a little bit keen in behind. Manila Kukuner got to set his own trackers out in front, and I wouldn't be surprised if, in time, uh, Classic Getaway, you know, let him let him roll, let him jump. He might even improve again. Yeah. Okay. And so, so he would look an obvious one, maybe for. Um, there's, I think there's a three mile novice chase at Christmas. I imagine he might go there. Um, whereas Grangeclough West, he was always maybe the sharper of the two, a bit quicker. And he showed that I think at the end of the maiden hurdle there, he yeah. um, he really you know the way he came up the hill it was it was a bit like it was a bit votory when he won his maiden hurdle there. Um, you know they went a good solid gallop. There was a couple of expensive horses um, uh, in front, and he just came through and made them look ordinary. So I think Willie had mentioned perhaps the Lauders of Nace, the, the two yeah. and a half mile Grade One novice in January. Um, but yeah, he's always worked well. He just missed last season with a little bit of a setback. Uh, but he could be, we're hope, hoping he's going to be a Spring Festival horse, definitely. Yeah, no, he looks uh, very, very smart. Talking about grade ones, Betfair Tingle Creek uh, this weekend. Gentlemen, to me, he, do you think he'll line up? Yeah, look, that was, that was the plan. That was when we got him out early um, in Nace, and obviously he needed the run badly. Um, but that was the same last year. He, he actually took two runs last year before he won. He, he was, I think, six or seven behind Fernie Hollow and Punchdown. And then he was second behind Hot on Claire's at Christmas. And then he, then he got his act together. Um, so look, it's we're not we're undecided. Obviously, going off that kind of a prep is not ideal, mm. um, and it looks a competitive race. But we'll see how he works uh, probably today and Thursday, and have a chat with JP. But my just my concern is that last season he got better in the springtime, um, yeah. and it took him a couple of runs to really get the full fitness. So, um, you know, I think it would be a big ask. I think. Um, big weekend uh, back home, isn't it, with Ferry House, Hatton's Grace. You've got the Drinmore as well, the big team assembly. Yeah, look, um, it's, it's a meeting that um, probably, you know, Gordon's always a couple of weeks ahead of us. And I think he probably farms a bit more than we do. It's maybe slightly early for our horses. Um, but I think we have a couple of nice ones going there. The, the Royal Bond, Champ Kiley was obviously very impressive when he won over two miles on in Tipperary, which is... Uh, a quick track, um, so he showed a good turn of foot there, having shown plenty of stamina in Galway. Um, Astro Diamond will be very interesting if she went there. You know, we won it with a couple of mares before, Early Beach and Statuaire. Um, so if she was to turn up, she could be interesting. Um, and then the Drimmore, again, the Drimmore is a race that comes a bit early for our novice chasers often. Um, and I'm not sure we've had huge success in it. But Adam and Chosen has been running through the summer. He's fitting well. His form got boosted there about 10 days ago. Um, so he could run well. And Geyer the Meniel is still a novice. Um, so he could go there as well. Um, you know, I'm hoping he might turn into a, a National Hunt chase horse. But um, two and a half might be a little on the, on the quick side for him. But uh, with his experience from last year, 
um, that would have to bring him into the reckoning. Mm. Yeah, we'll know more by Friday. But obviously, Willie's column uh, with uh, Sport and Life. We look forward to, to, to reading that this week. Um, quickly, just go back to last weekend. How impressed were you with Constitution Hill in the fighting fifth? Sure, I mean, how could you not be impressed? Um, you know, I, I love the way he jumped. He was uh, clever at some. And when he was long at others, he committed to it, particularly the last. The last was yep. a steppy stride. He could have yep. very easily uh, done it any power or something there. Um, but it was when I saw the picture of him, it was like it was like a picture to see a fly, you know, just uh, committing and uh, really stretching for it. Mm. Um, so, look, he's, uh, he's hugely exciting. But I've been lucky enough to ride behind both himself and Honeysuckle. And um, I believe the mayor can beat when I see it. Yeah, absolutely, with with her alliance. I uh, just hope that both can get there uh, in one piece. Fantastic, and so much to look forward to. Patrick, thanks very much for joining us, and best luck at the weekend. OK, it's time for Team Tracker. Martin Dixon, I'll start with you, because you gave us a winner last week, is that right? Blenkinsop got us off the mark, didn't he? He won easily at Southall. Um, I'd like to think he might be able to win mm. again. I think I said the other week he could win four or five this season, and... He's going to have shot up the weights, but he won easy. Um, hopefully a Buffalo Soldier, who I saw win at Newbury last week, is another horse that can have a really good season. He, he won from down at the bottom of the weights in a pretty good race, good staying handicap hurdle at Newbury last Friday. Showed a good attitude. He was stepping up in trip towards three miles for the first time. Uh, seen the trip out really, really well. He's won three of his six starts under rules. He's just really progressive, honest, genuine horse, mm. unexposed as a stayer. Handicap has put him up £6 this morning. I think that's very fair, to be honest, and they'll be able to find some nice opportunities yeah. for him that are maybe even in a lower grade than the race that he won at Newbury last week. Good angle, that. Okay. Uh, well, my trips to the track yielded Kelso, and there wasn't a great deal going on there, so I'm going to step on your two's toes because you were at Carlisle but I was really impressed with what Bass Rock did first time over fences. Over two mile which yes he had form over three over hurdles looked to stay there but his fencing was really accurate it was a properly run race mm. he had, I mean they didn't hang around on the run up did they and ultimately he brushed him aside you can make what you will the rest John Joss was probably not a chaser and he absolutely walked through that one last in the back didn't Soaring he? Glory, yeah. yeah Soaring Glory so yeah, people will possibly question the form, but that might just help us to get a better price next time. I just don't think you see many more assured chasing debutants than that, and whisper it, but I reckon we might be talking about a graded winner there later in the season that likes of Haydock, one of the good novices there, something like that. There was a, a good shot of him side on three out, and he absolutely oh, that was class, wing, wasn't it? winged it, because you just got a really good side on view of the, yeah. of, the, of the jump there, three out at, at Carlisle, and he winged it, and that kind of summed up his performance with you. Yes, but on Landon Arbo, Ladd had basically jumped well himself, hadn't he? Yeah, they got to that third last and he just got completely outgunned in the Beating end. Beating a couple of horses who were rated 130, and mm. sort of we know that they are. Forget about the, the first two in the market who didn't give their running, but still solid looked at. I think it's a race that could work out anyway, because Jitwali was ridden differently, was a good handicapper last season. I don't think they can touch his mark because he's done it in non-handicap. Yeah. And the same for Landon Arbo, Ladd. I genuinely think, even though people look at Soaring Glory and think, oh, that probably didn't take much winning, that the first three will be winning race between them, but the one I've picked is Bass Rock. Who's yeah, he is a good horse, definitely. Mm. Yeah, trained by Sandy Thompson, who you are uh, going well. Good Hill 16, obviously, in the Beecher Chase this weekend. They're the team trackers. Right, give us a winner for the weekend. What are you backing? Well, it is Hill 16 for me right. in the Beecher. Um, I think you just love good. Sandy Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, there's reason to love Sandy Thompson because. Um, in November, he's had nine winners at a 39% strike rate, so the stable are absolutely flying along now. They had the double at Carlisle on Sunday when we were there. When Hill 16 made his comeback run, it was actually behind Sounds Russian, who we've mentioned on the show already, in a really good quality handicap up at Kelso, but that was in October. Um, it was before the Sandy Thompson horses were really mm. going particularly. He only had one winner in October. That was his first winner of the season, but through November, they've really come good. You just know that Hill 16 will have been properly targeted at the race to, to come to his peak I think for trying to go one better in the beach of this year he's about a 10 to 1 shot at the moment as we speak on Tuesday I do think he'll shorten up I think you know yeah. there, there'll be a lot of support for him I think in once declarations are coming through and it's just a race that suited him very well last year and I've no reason to think that he, he won't go close Hill 16 wins the beach or chase for Martin Dixon Dan? Mm, maybe not because I might go with percussion with uncertainty around Dusa it would be Dusa at 6 to 1 taken as it is as a price I say that strategy of maybe having a quarter of stake on him at the current price and having a bit more on at fours fine later on. But if we can have two darts in the beach, I think that's fair cop. And I'll go percussion each way as opposed to Dr. Kanangri, who's like my second name on the team sheet. OK, good stuff. Right, that's the, the lads' fancies for the weekend. Best of luck, whatever you fancy this weekend, a cracking 
uh, weekends race, and then there would obviously Hatton's Grace at Drinmore in Ferryhouse in Ireland, and this side of the Irish Sea, we have the Tingle Creek at Sandown and the Beecher Chase at Indre. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.